This 136 million uh, dollar, 30,000 meter squared iconic building will have an instantly recognizable form like no other, epitomized by its futuristic stainless steel facade, integrated with an illuminated glazed Arabic uh, calligraphy feature. It's another great example of a team fully embracing the latest design tools. The vision for the museum is to be an incubator for the most cutting edge ideas, designs, and prototypes from across the globe, a driver for innovation and a global destination for inventors and entrepreneurs. To create a museum worthy of its vision, the design team put rationalization, computational and generative design at the heart of the iterative analysis process needed to ad adapt and optimize the steel diagrid geometry behind the museum's unique shape to achieve design predictability for the project during construction. Here to tell us more is the design and construction team that made this project possible. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Sean Killer from Killer Design. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe take you a little bit through the design process and some of the challenges. Um, I don't know if any of you were there this morning, but I'll reiterate some of it. So, actually this was a competition, uh, international competition, and we had very, very little time. Um, and actually initially we had done a whole bunch of options, and within a few weeks we decided this wasn't what we wanted, so we had half the time left. So it's really about speed, and I'm sure many of the architects here face the similar challenges where you need to get something from a sketch to 3D renderings and even animations extremely quickly. So what we did was used uh, from literally a sketch and scanning the sketch and getting uh, 3D models out, we used uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, and, and one of the biggest challenges was actually getting this calligraphy onto the, onto the building. Uh, so that was a reiterative process that uh, initially it was a placeholder. And then later on, when we requested uh, the Prime Minister to, to actually write the poetry himself, and then later on we had to put it on accurately. Uh, but I'll just go through some of the process. So it was a great collaboration between Bureau Happel and ourselves. Uh, we in, sometimes we actually co-located, although they were also working around the world as, on the structures and MEP. And we decided from, from day one to bring the project together uh, entirely in rivet and take it right from from the concept sketches right through to construction drawings and one in two details coming out of rivet models. Uh, so we, we, we didn't have any AutoCAD whatsoever and that was a challenge that we set amongst ourselves as well as uh, in collaboration with the client. So I don't know if many of you know Dubai but uh, there is a main stretch uh, called Sheikh Said Road the building is perfectly located right in the center of, of Dubai on, on the main track uh, on a lovely site in front of Emirates Towers. So it has a lot of space around it. It's right next to the metro. So on the one side here we have the very, very first sketch done at 3 o'clock in the morning. So essentially that sketch actually encapsulates the idea of even bringing the calligraphy onto the building. Um, and it was really about coming up with a form that was futuristic as well as uh, there was a bit of knowledge in the briefing document when we, or, or the briefing uh, session when, when the client said that the, his offices had been, uh, had been remodeled and Feng Shui was part of it. So actually one of the challenges in the design was saying, well, if, if the rest of the site has got two triangles and triangles represent fire, then if you have one and a second one, it actually it, it represents through the yin and yang twice the energy as two, as two fires, so if you put a third one, you actually have, uh, you have an argument amongst them. So you had to have to come up with a combination of what was the most um, significant uh, and, and, and something that could draw energy from, from these uh, particular elements, which through Feng Shui was actually a form of an oval which represents earth and sky. So beyond that, it was, it was, there was a challenge of having the uh, metro line in the front of the site so we wanted to lift the building up to above the, the metro line, and that's where we use the, um, this green hill. And in there, we've got all the parking, all the MEP, back of house, we've got about 20,000 square meters of space in that area. Um, and then you can see on, 
On the rest of the building, we have the, the exhibition floors going up the, the large, thicker side. Each of them is nine meters floor to floor, and there's seven floors. So these are actually exhibition halls that will constantly be changing. So they will represent the future of education, future of transportation, healthcare, smart cities, sustainability, and future government services, and constantly be changing. And that was the concept came through that these spaces would represent what people know for the first, let's say, five or 10 years, perhaps 15 years of what will be the future of these, of these subjects. But the void actually represents what we don't know. And it's people who seek what we don't know who reinvent and rediscover elements. So it's actually the most significant part of the building. So as you can see on, on, on the slides there, we started r r very early concept where we started r cutting the slabs and similar um, discussions we had where the, the edge of the building, when we offset it, the, the the curtain wall is actually 1.3 meters deep, and it incorporates all the diagrid within the, so the entire structure of the building is similar to a shell. And the, the facade from the stainless steel on the outside, we gave uh, 400 millimeters of, uh, of cladding zone, which, which incorporates this, the uh, t between nine meter and 12 meter panels by two and a half meter. So all the structure to hold the facade, including all the glass, because the calligraphy is actually transparent, uh, would be in this space. And then we would have the diagrid, which is 450 millimeters, and then the, uh, the, the structure to hold the inside cladding. And the two all had to be unison. So one of the biggest challenges at that time was, as I say, taking calligraphy, which is actually uh, very um, organic in its shape, and taking another parametric organic shape and actually putting the two on top of each other. And it took us three months to work out how to do that because there just wasn't a method without distorting the calligraphy. Uh, eventually, we discovered that uh, 3D Studio Max Skin uh, w had that ability, but we had to fool uh, Max because when it recognized a torus, a torus, it wanted to do things automatically. So we had to break the building up to get that to work. So we took the building, cut the slabs, and started working, obviously, with Bureau Happel in structures in developing uh, the rest of the design through that process. As you can see, um, all the drawings were beautifully represented when we started cutting all different types of sections uh, where you can see through the facade. And, um, and again, the calligraphy became very, very difficult to deal with uh, because what was in Max, for example, a 40 megabyte file, uh, when we imported it into Rivet, or we tried to import it into Rivet, it would go up to about 450 to 500 megabytes. So we struggled uh, for many, many weeks trying to get it in with computers crashing. And again, we decided to break up the model up into uh, some 20 or 30 parts and bring it in one by one into little piecemeal uh, within a rivet environment and then link all of them together and then bring them into the, the main rivet model. So once again, it's these sorts of things which you just learn along the way and, uh, and, and, and the team working with, obviously, we, we reached out to Autodesk many times to try to, to work with that. There was an intention with all the stakeholders to actually make sure that this building bought into the latest and greatest uh, standards set forth by the BIM community. So the BIM execution plan, along with the guidelines, along with all the different technical uh, documents, were all sort of coming together, and they all actually represented one of the first examples within the Middle East uh, for this type of delivery process to be actually executed. And what it's serving as, it's serving as a role model for the actual industry in Dubai, and the government is now actually applying these types of regulations for all buildings going forward. So not only were Bureau Happold with Killer Design and Autodesk all part of this actual process, but we were actually trying to set the stage and set the guidelines up for everybody to follow going forward. In terms of making the vision viable, obviously the vision in this case is actually the realization of the complexity of the design. Now, again, the scale of the building here is much smaller than what we just saw in terms of the airport, but the level of information that went into it is actually extremely detailed in terms of trying to navigate all the mechanical services through the actual very narrow facade cavities, or else trying to make sure that the, the steel uh, exoskeleton actually is the most efficient and the most effective structure possible. 
Like Sean said, the, the base of the building, the mound, is where a lot of the back of the house and a lot of the mechanical equipment was located. So all that was concentrated at the lower portion and then had to find its way up the building through, let's say, a less conventional shape or a much more challenging shape in that case. The, the whole idea of forward integration had to come together by bringing all the different disciplines together. Now, the list of disciplines on the right were delivered by from, from practices around the world, many of whom are from Bureau Happold, but you can actually see the actual tools that were developed by these disciplines. Now, these were tools that were initially used, a lot of them based on Autodesk products, but once the Autodesk products reached their limit, what they were done is that they were pushed a little bit further. So the bottom image you can see there is the actual gen the, the generative algorithm that was used to develop the actual exoskeleton of the building. Now, we had sort of constraints that we had to follow. We had dimensional requirements. We had architectural floor plans. We had the calligraphy. And so by massaging and constantly tweaking these with the built-in constraints, were we able to actually come up with the most efficient and elegant solution for the building itself. The calligraphy actually added another layer of complexity, which we sort of had to then balance by actually massaging the two together. The, the image on the top there actually shows the people movement exercise that's required there. Again, similar to this venue that you're in today, there's a large number of people and, and, and traffic that's actually uh, moving through this building. So to make sure that the evacuation procedures, that the actual real-time usability of the building was justified, had to be done through simulation processes, as you can see there. Hi, um, as the, the, the main contractor, uh, we took ownership of all the design team's models. So um, our first challenge was to integrate all, all the various models into uh, one federated model. So uh, we, we chose uh, BIM360 Glue as a collaborative uh, cloud tool. All these images you see in our each model um, take quick screenshot taken from the BIM360 Glue model which everyone on the project has access to. Um, we provide in-house training. Um, any issues um, are dealt with on site. Um, as well as that, you can see the, the complexity of the MEP. Um, we also broke up um, these models into um, different, uh, different color coordination, so it made, made it simpler to, to review these models uh, simply by, by changing the color, like the, each steel node are being fabricated off, off site, and some of these are, are coming in, in nine meter um, lengths, and each, each node is, has a different color to represent a lift. Um, the, the, the engineers on site are able to use these models to get the weight of the lift. Um, we, we're using a 4D construction sequencing to, um, to look ahead uh, for health and safety, for uh, logistics, just, just for on-site coordination. Also, we're using it to report progress to the client. Um, we incorporate the data uh, using um, as-built status codes. So uh, you can see the color uh, green will, will represent what, what already has been installed on site. And then the lighter color um, blue is a uh, scion is what um, is delivered. So we can, we can update the client on a weekly, daily basis of progress. Um, to show that we're, we're on time and within program. Um, also, we're using um, some, um, the laser scanning, 3D laser scanning for verification. Um, we, we see this as, a, as an important tool in, in a structure, structure like the museum. Um, the image down on the bottom left was just after we poured the ring beam. Um, those anchor bolts are what's going to hold up the structure. So we thought it was very important to take 3D laser scan to identify their exact location. We were able to um, bring in the laser scan into, into our Navisworks file or our Revit file. We were also able to crop out special areas uh, using the, the uh, software um, recap. Um, send all this information to our subcontractors so they can reach to check their design, change anything they need to change before it got to site. Um, so the last image then is, is, is just our latest image on site. You can see we've progressed back up to level one, which Sean, that image might show that it's, it's a, right on the level of the metro line. And now we have to start building our, our steel diagrid. Um, as you see from this project, None of this would, would be possible without using BIM technology. 
Um, we're going down to right to health and safety and how to, to uh, fit the scaffolding on site to how the, the, the building um, is advanced. We're using 4D construction sequencing. And just on the, the last, there's just a few images taken from the architectural, um, architectural model, some uh, renders.